Well, good morning. That's not my usual coffee. We'll come back to this in a minute. Welcome to the most glorious morning here in Cambridge. Now today, I want to talk about batteries. Now, some of you know, I have a bit of a thing for batteries. I love the fact that they just sit here in the garage and work. Whenever there's excess solar, they charge. When we need power, they discharge. But the other day, I bought another battery. Yeah, yeah, I know, I got too many batteries. This was an EcoFlow power bank. Now, this is not a sponsored video. I purchased this with my own money. But it started me thinking, why can't small batteries like this operate in the same way that these do, i.e. when there's excess solar, can I charge that battery? So today we're gonna to dig into that. We've gotta figure out how we're gonna find out from the inverter and the batteries when there is excess solar available, and we're gonna use that to turn on either a smart plug or another device that allows us to charge batteries, electric bikes, or many, many other things within the house. Then when the excess solar goes away, we wanna stop that charging. There's a really simple way to solve this problem, and it's called Home Assistant. So let's start with what is Home Assistant? Home Assistant is a free to use open source platform that allows you to run a small server device within your home network to control all sorts of different things from multiple different vendors. Now I'm sure some of you have smart home devices that work with Amazon Alexa, with Google's Home, with Apple's HomeKit, but one of the things you might start to notice as you buy more and more devices, especially from more and more vendors, is that some work with some platforms and some work with others. Home Assistant has been designed to solve that because it allows people to create their own plugins and it allows you to run devices from multiple different manufacturers but more importantly, to integrate them together. So it allows you to create very simple, but also quite complicated integrations. Now, what's the best way to get started with Home Assistant? As I say, Home Assistant is open source software. You can go to the website, you can download it, you can install it on a plethora of different devices. This is not gonna be a tutorial on Home Assistant. If you want to learn more about Home Assistant, then I can recommend a couple of great channels. One is called Speak to the Geek, Another is called the Bearded Tinkerer, and I'll put links to both of those in the description below. You can set up Home Assistant to run on an old PC, you can set it to run on a Raspberry Pi, or you can do is, as in my case, is I purchased a ready-to-go little appliance called a Home Assistant Green. You literally take this out of the box, you plug it into your network, you power it on, you point a web browser at it, and it's up and running. And then it requires some minor maintenance, some software upgrades once a month, and uh, to keep all your plugins up to date to make sure everything works. But it's relatively simple and it's all driven through a web interface. Now, I'm gonna show you my Home Assistant. Now, I don't want anyone to get freaked out here because I've got a lot of different devices all integrated in here. Don't get freaked out by it. But what I'm gonna show you today is how we're gonna create a really simple automation. And that automation is gonna talk to my SolarEdge inverter, it's gonna find out from the solar edge inverter whether it's charging or it's discharging or it's holding its current power because there's no requirement from the house. It is then gonna send an instruction to a device to turn on or off. Now in this case, I'm gonna use this little Sonoff USB switch. You plug this in and it connects to the network and I can send a signal to it to say, start charging or stop charging from this port. So when we connect our EcoFlow battery, this can turn the charging on and off. But this thing's quite simple. It just gets told, turn on, turn off. It needs some intelligence to understand when to turn on and when to turn off. Now you can do this with a little USB switch like that, or you could use a smart plug. It is totally up to you, but the concept is exactly the same. And in fact, for the purposes of the demo today, we're not actually gonna turn switches on and off. I'm gonna show you it with a light. Now this is a Hue light from Philips. Um, and yes, I know I'm probably gonna get a thousand comments about why we shouldn't be using Hue lights because uh, they're expensive and overpriced and they don't work very well. But as you can see now, this is currently green. 
Now what we're going to do is set the automation up and we're going to have the automation change the color of this light depending upon the status of the solar edge inverter. Now for those of you that don't have solar edge, you might have a different manufacturer, the theory behind this is the same. So you might have to make some tweaks if you're using a different manufacturer's uh, solar inverter and batteries, but the concept is going to be exactly the same. So let's dig into it. So this is Home Assistant. This is my main dashboard that I use to monitor my entire solar battery setup across multiple different vendors. And you can see up here in the top corner, I have live power flows from all the different devices so I can see exactly where the power is going. So the first concept you really have to understand with, uh, with Home Assistant is what we call sensors and entities. So if we go into our settings here and we go to devices and services, and as I say, you can see here, these are all the different things that I have integrated with my Home Assistant. Um, ignore the failed setup ones there, but what we're gonna do is go across here to our Solar Edge Modbus Multi. This is the integration with my Solar Edge inverter and batteries. So if I click on the devices here, you'll see we've got five devices. We've got an inverter, we've got the three batteries, and we've got the meter that records how much power goes in and out. Well, what we're actually looking to do is see whether the batteries are charging or whether the batteries are discharging or whether the batteries are holding their charge. So you can see over at the side there, the batteries are all pretty much equal, they're about 90% charge. But if we go into the device, we can see we get so much more information. Now again, if you're not using Solar Edge, you're using some other manufacturer of inverter, you will see different entities here, but the concepts are all the same. So again, just looking at the battery, we can see how big the battery is, what the current temperature is, what power it's outputting, how much battery, uh, energy it's imported, what its state of charge is, all sorts of different information. But the piece we're after is this piece here, status. What is its current status? And its current status is charge. So it's charging right now. Now, if I click on that, you can see here, it actually keeps a history. So you can see all the times when the battery was, when it's yellow, it's discharging, when it's blue, it's charging, when it's red, it's preserving charge. But this just gives me a log of everything that's happening with that battery. If I click on there, it will actually give me this thing called an entity ID. This here, sensor.solaredge.battery1 underscore status underscore two. That is the entity ID that I'm gonna use for my automation. So we can just copy that. Now, if we go back to automations, let's take a look at our automation for our Hue light. So I've named it here, Office Hue Go Solar Battery Status. Now what this, in, this automation does is it changes the color of this light depending on what the battery status is. So I can just sit this in the corner of the room and depending on what color this is, I know what my batteries are doing. Now, if you take that concept, you can replace this with this really easily. So if you understand how it works, how to change the color of a light, you'll know how to turn a switch on and off. Okay, in its simplest form, this is three automations combined into one. Now it'd be really simple to have an automation that says, when the battery is full, do this. When, and then have another automation that says, when the battery is charging, do this. Have another automation that says, when the battery is discharging, do this. The problem I find with that is I end up with hundreds of automations and it's much easier to condense them all into one. And for that, we use something called trigger IDs. So trigger IDs just allow us to say, when a certain condition is met, give this a name. And we can use that name to trigger something else. So in this case, we've got three when statements. One is for when the battery is full, it's preserving its charge. So you can see here, we've called the trigger ID, solar battery full. And we trigger that when the entity that we just looked at is in the state preserve charge. Then we have two more, one for when it's charging and one for when it's discharging. So what happens is when this runs, when the state of the battery changes, all we do is create one of three trigger IDs. Now we also have an optional and if here. So if one of these happens and the time is between nine o'clock in the morning and five o'clock at night, because I don't want this sitting in my office changing colors all night when there's nobody here to see it. So we just make sure that if it's running, it needs to be running between nine o'clock in the morning and five o'clock at night. And then we do something. So if one of those trigger IDs happens, we do something with it. 
So let's take a look at what we do. So if we're triggered by solar battery full, so the battery has reached 100%, it's now gone into preserve charge, we're going to do something. And that action is turn on the light. Now when we turn the light on, what you can see here is we're actually setting different parameters for the light. We're changing its color, we're uh, turning it on, we're setting it to a certain brightness. So again, if I turn this light back on now, as you can see, here's the automation in action. The light is currently purple, that means the battery is in preserve its charge state. Now the light has gone red, that means the battery is currently discharging. The light then moves from discharging to preserve charge and then to green, which means the battery is now charging again. So you get the concept. If something happens with the solar edge inverter, then change the color of the light. But we can now substitute the light for either a smart plug, or in this case, a little USB charger. So you'll see here, I have another automation. This one says, toggle the battery charger. Now this one only has two, and this can run all day and all night. We don't need any and if, so it's much, much simpler than the light version. When the solar edge status changes to charge, and it stays in the charge state for 30 seconds, this just stops us if we have a cloudy day and the charging, discharging, charging, discharging. Um, I don't want this switching the battery on and off. So when the solar edge battery is charging, and it's charging for at least 30 seconds, then do one of two things. If it's charging, turn on USB battery charger. So that entity there turns this device on. So let me explain how this works. Here we have a USB power supply. We have our little Sonoff USB switch. We have a cable running into our EcoFlow battery. And if I just turn that on, um, you can see there we've got about 21% charge. So let's imagine now the house batteries are full, we've got some excess energy, and we want to be able to turn this charger on. So if I were to go here and do run action, what you'll notice is the switch turned on, and we can now see that the battery is beginning to charge. This is because this is the action that will happen when it senses that the solar edge battery is completely full and has spare energy that would normally go to the grid, we would turn this on. And obviously if the house suddenly required more power and there was no spare energy, we'd want to be able to turn it off. So again, I can just run the action here, which will turn the switch off and the battery is no longer charging. Now, as I said at the beginning, this isn't designed to be a tutorial on Home Assistant. There are much, much better people out there on the internet to teach you how to use Home Assistant. The whole point of this was to show you that it is possible to be able to charge other devices based on the status of your solar inverter. In my case, when there is free energy available, I use it to charge up devices like power banks, I use it to charge up our electric bikes um, and other things, and then when there's no free energy available, I want to stop them charging. So again, I do this through Home Assistant, through really simple automations that are, when this happens, do this. When something else happens, when it changes, do this. I hope this has inspired you. Home Assistant isn't scary. You don't have to be a geek. You don't have to be a programmer to make it work. You can get started relatively low cost, certainly under hundred pounds to buy something like a Home Assistant Green that will allow you to get into the world of automating your home. And hopefully this has just given you that little bit of a push to give it a try. With that, I'm gonna sign off. I hope this has been useful. If you have enjoyed it, a like and a subscribe would be greatly appreciated. And if I'm lucky, I'll see you back here real soon for another video. Take care.